All right, so as a follow-up to the laser cut stencils, I'm going to try actually reflowing with them. So I've got a couple of PCBs taped to the desk um, to align the, um, the PCB I'm actually using. And then I did my best to line up the stencil on there and it's you know it's not quite perfect but we'll see how it works um, normally you would use a tub of paste but I don't have that so I'm gonna use my syringe and just put a bunch up here and slide it down um, I'll probably make you know three boards and uh, see how it goes so these are the, the, the um, results I was able to achieve. The, um, they're not perfect, but they're also far from bad. Um, I'm reasonably happy with that. So I'm going to populate them with components and throw them in the oven. So we've got all the components placed on there. Um, I had to do one substitute, well, two substitutions. One, I didn't have any of these inductors, so I used a 15 nano, a nano Henry and a 63 nano Henry. Uh, I'm not as happy about having to use a 63. It, that one's in the, this bias T that provides power. So um, this one's the 12 rather than 15. So if, if the performance is really bad, I'm going to order some parts on DigiKey, but. Um, I'm going to see for now just to test to see if those are close enough to being within spec that they'll work. Okay, so it's starting to melt there on the end. Oh, these ones are starting to kick off. I can see the, um, the leads on the dual flat no lead packages melting and, and uh, doing their business. So I think I'm going to give this just another couple of seconds before I shut it off. Okay. Now I give it another, you know, 30 seconds or so to sort of just let the heat soak. If you want to know more about the toaster oven or you want to watch an entire cycle, I've got an uncut video of it on my channel. Um, I've gotten a little bit of flack from people about my method. It's about as low tech as you can get. I just have a regular unmodified toaster. I stick it on the tray, put it up all the way to the highest heat. Um, toast uses both the top and bottom elements. The reason for that is that um, I had to do that to get the highest possible heat um, increase or temperature increase. And then um, I just watch it. So uh, if I'll show a video or a picture of the reflow profile, but you try to get the highest possible increase and then you let it soak there at the high, at the high point. And then you're actually supposed to get it to sort of cool down at a given rate and I don't really do that much to try to get that perfect um, but I found I don't really need to it's not like I'm making thousands of boards in a high yield type setup so when it's done I just turn it off I kind of let it soak I crack it to let it start cooling down slowly and I'll open it up all the way to try to manage the cooling rate But they look pretty good. Then after they've sort of sat there for for a bit, um, I take some tweezers and I sort of fish them out and put them on the front glass.
what happened with the person that commented negatively on my method was that they had just let their boards sit and burn um, using my advice and well they weren't really using my advice because the first thing I had said is use your common sense and obviously if it looks like your boards are getting burnt stop uh, furthermore once it starts melting you don't need to go that much further so once it melts you know give it a minute max and then shut everything down and kind of open it up and um, I actually think those joints on the DFNs look really great so hopefully you can see there on the DFN that it seems like that joint is basically perfect and I've never had a, a reflow DFN at home that I didn't have to attack after the fact with um, solder wick and solder flux. So if, if anything, they look like they might not have quite enough solder. And uh, I'm not really sure if there's much I can do about it at this point. But I think they probably have enough. But one way or another, none of them have solder bridges. Which up to this point has been my biggest problem with DFNs and QFNs and stuff like that. So I'm really happy with this result. I'm going to put on the power pins and some SMAs. And uh, we'll see what they look like on the spectrum analyzer.